Good evening. My name is Pastor Ja. I'm from Team Los Angeles, and uh, welcome to our seven last words. I'll be sharing to you the word number two today. It will be with me in paradise. You know what? I remember in the 80s, back in the Philippines, whenever it is Lent and season, my grandma will always tell me not to play outside. For if I get hurt, according from her, my wound will not heal because Jesus is dead on a good Friday. We were also like, don't take a bath, wait for Easter Sunday. And we will watch the Betamax tape of Ten Commandments starring Charlton Heston. That's why I grew up with this idea that when I get to heaven, as I search for what Moses looked like, I will be very disappointed <laughs> if he does not look like Charlton Heston. <laughs> for me, if I will be asked about my religion back then, uh, I will talk about probably our annual Pabasa ng Passion, or in English, reading of uh, Passion of the Christ book by singing, yes, by singing nonstop for 24 hours, singing the entire book, and the Salabat, or the Filipino ginger tea. And uh, how about the ginataang bilo-bilo or the sticky rice balls in cocoa milk? That's why that's what I remember, you know, um, about my childhood during Lenten season. I remember a story of a kindergarten teacher who gave her class a show and tell, now, a show and tell assignment of bringing something to represent their religion. It was Lenten season, so she asked her students uh, to bring something that will represent their religion. The first child got in front of the class and said, My name is Benjamin and I am a Jewish and this is the Star of David. The second child got in front of her uh, and said, My name is Mary, I am Catholic and this is the Crucifix. The third child who proudly represent our group got up in the front of his class and said, My name is Juan de la Cruz and um, I am a Pinoy Nazarene, and this is the adobo for our patla. <laughs> Magandang gabi po. In Tagalog, sinabi ni Jesus sa kaniya, katotohan ang sinasabi ko sa iyo, sa araw na ito, ikaw ay makakasama ko sa paraiso. In Ilonggo, nagsiling si Jesus sa iya, matuod ining, Ginasiling ko sa imo nga subong nga adlaw mangin kaupod ko ikaw sa paraiso. In Spanish, entonces Jesus le dijo, De cierto te digo que hoy estarás conmigo en el paraiso. Truly, I tell you today, He will be with me in paradise. Luke 23:43. In this passage, Jesus is assuring one of the criminals on the cross that when he died, he would be with Jesus in heaven. This was granted because even at the hour of his death, the criminal had expressed his uh, faith in Jesus, recognizing him for who he was. When I received the email from Pastor Manny that I will talk about this verse, the second to Jesus' last words, I did so and uh, picture myself, and I was able to identify with that criminal on that cross. A filthy, worthless sinner, only saved by grace. But the difference between us is that he accepted Jesus on the last minutes of his life. I accepted Christ when I'm about to graduate from college back in the mid-90s. How am I supposed to understand this guy for I never yet experienced death? But my question was, where and what is paradise? Honestly, when I think about paradise, I think of a beautiful beach, sunset, um, cool breeze, and um, lots of uh, food for feasting. That's paradise for me. But for us believers, do we really need to die physically for us to experience paradise with Christ? The truth is, as we allow Him to enter in our heart and give Him the driver's steering wheel or manubela, 
as we journey to our life's road to, to real life. Paradise can truly be experienced here on earth. But again, we can argue that life here is full of struggles while in real paradise, everything is so nice, no more tears and no more pains. Yes, a life here on earth is with full of struggles, but it's a beautiful life struggle with Jesus, our Lord, at ang ating chuper ng buhay, or the Lord who drives our life, or who, 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 uh, who used the steering wheel, who's in charge, who's driving our life. For me, that scene of Jesus on the cross with the criminal is a reminder for us to claim our heavenly heritage. According to Ezekiel 36 or 26, it says here, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. After reading this verse, I told myself, even without experiencing death, now I can identify with the criminal on the cross. In life, we all have negative things that happen to us. We go through situations that are unfair. I was raised in an unhealthy environment, actually. My family had issues and it made my life much more difficult. But here's the truth. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just like the criminal, though after dying, he entered paradise with Jesus. But in this paradise here on earth, where we still live, he gives you a new heart. In other words, your bloodline changes. From an ordinary ascal or stray dog to a ferocious lion. No longer are you subject to your earthly heritage. You become subject to your heavenly heritage. From a stray dog to a ferocious lion. His spiritual blessing always overrides the curse in the natural realm. When you understand who you are and what God has already done, you realize that nothing can stop you from fulfilling your God-given destiny. Remember, you came from Almighty God. He gave your life. When you choose Him, you are choosing your heavenly heritage of blessings and eternal abundant life. Same thing with your spiritual DNA comes from God. According from Romans 8.14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So, if your father has this DNA, obviously, you will inherit that kind of DNA. Have you ever really considered your spiritual DNA? You know what? The emblem of a New Hope Naz in North Hollywood is uh, DNA. Why? Because they believe we have this DNA in us. Your Heavenly Father spoke worlds into existence. Imagine that. He aligned stars in the space. He painted every sunrise. He designed every flower. He made man out of dust and breathed life into him. Now, here's the key. He is not just the creator of the universe. He is not just the all-powerful God. He is your heavenly father. You have his DNA. Imagine what you can do. So the criminal and us were both saved by Jesus. I realized since I'm still living, I can still do a lot of things for the glory of God, unlike with that criminal, right? When you realize who you are, you won't go around intimidated and insecure. You come from the right family. Tell the person next to you, you come from the right family. You have the right DNA. Your father created all. When you know who you are, it changes your thinking to, ah, I have the favor of God. Blessings are chasing me down. When you know who you are, you'll start thinking like a winner, talking like a winner, carrying yourself, carrying yourself like a winner. And soon you'll start living like a winner too. Remember, you have the DNA of God. And that's enough to overcome every obstacle in Jesus' name. Right? Let's pray. God in heaven, Heavenly Father, thank you for 
sending your son, Jesus, so that I may be saved. I may not yet enter your paradise, unlike the criminal you forgave on the cross, but thank you for I can claim that paradise already started when I received you as my Lord and Savior. Today, Lord, I surrender every area of my life to you. Have your way in me. Let your will be done in my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for adopting me into your family and transforming my spiritual makeup. I know that I am empowered in you and through you. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give the best clap offering for God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. And um, have a nice uh, weekend. God bless you. Happy Easter. Thank you.